school. When did he start struggling with math? What grade? Probably about fifth grade. So this has been a while. Yeah. I'm wondering if this is just a habit. And what I mean by that, whereas he never really applied himself to math, the, is the interest in the commitment there? Because that's the first thing. You know, we no. talk about academic concerns, but if he's not interested, if he's not committed, you know, if he's not serious about achieving in math, he won't. So he's let's not, not make this academic if it's really psychological. Okay. You, you feel me? Yes. So that, that's the first thing. If, if, if this is psychological issues of effort, interest, and motivation, that's mm -hmm. not a that's not a learning issue. That's a psychological stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't value the education. And if that's the case, the question becomes: What are the consequences at home for when he does poorly in school? Because if there's no consequences, all we're doing is reinforcing the underachievement. So I take his electronics, I take his TV, um, he doesn't have access to communication with his friends, but it's periodic because he'll do good maybe in class, but the testing is where he struggles. So he has consequences, the consequences is consistent with the grade that he gets. Okay, um, number one, I would look into getting him a tutor. He's had a tutor, I'm looking into a different type of tutor and um, he's supposed to start uh, probably within a month because financially I just can't afford it right now, but he'll start within a month with this new tutor and they're gonna start him um, like on probably for like sixth grade math to work him up so he can get better with his timing. Like he knows a lot of it, but the timing, he takes a long time to answer the questions. Okay, okay. When he doesn't finish. And when he doesn't finish, his grade, you know, gets lower. Okay. So I would get him a tutor and I would try mm -hmm. to find a retired teacher to be the tutor. But, you know, you mm -hmm. can get a college student, you know, or another high school student. So definitely the tutoring. But I, I believe his interest is elsewhere. Is he into sports, music? What is he into? He's into trains. He wants to be a motorman. Like he's been talking about trains basically since he's been born. So right now we're doing research on different areas within the transit system, like Metro North, uh, Long Island Railroad, MTA, where, where his interest lies. So we've been doing research on that, and I'm trying to acclimate math into that where it can become interesting for him. Okay. He's not a special ed kid, right? No. He does great in every other subject except math. Is dad involved? His dad is present. Um, but his, his belief is, um, if he doesn't do good in math, like I put him in a private school, he goes to Cardinal Hayes. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Cardinal Hayes. Um, I put him in that school because it, there's a lot more resources available to him in one setting rather than me taking him to three or four different places to get the help that he needs. Like they have on-site one-on-one, they have like on-site tutoring. So they have a lot of things there. He can learn chess, lacrosse. Um, art, court, like there's a lot of things, but his dad doesn't think that his grades are sufficient enough for him to be in that setting. So his attitude is like he could just go to public school if he's not going to apply himself in math. You know, it doesn't make sense to to spend the money academically if he's not going to apply himself in math. He's um, present, but he doesn't help with the math. Like, He'll tell him what to do, but there's no hands-on kind of, you know, application. I don't think he's getting enough practice, and I don't think he's interested enough. Uh, I think the tutor will help because the tutor will force him to spend more time on task. But I really think this is a repetition thing. I really he think had it's a tutor, and and but that don't mean they was a good know, tutor. That's like somebody saying my child had a mean. therapist. That don't mean they was a good therapist just because you that's had one. Believe. Don't mean it was mm -hmm. effective. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I know people say, you know, I've been in therapy for three years. Okay, and you're still an addict. So, obviously, the therapist did nothing for you. You know what I mean? So, when you're dealing with the helping professions, it's not enough to just say, I had a therapist, I had a tutor. If you okay. still have this issue, what good did that one serve? You, you, you know right. what I mean? Um, 
And then I think also with the consequences, we got to be a little bit more consistent because I don't really think he's being made to feel the pressure of his underachievement. He's not going to change unless he's made to feel uncomfortable without changing. So, mm -hmm. and just taking things from him is not going to work because he's a teenager. You know, that mm -hmm. you got to put them to work. He has to be made to engage in behavior outside the house he don't want to be bothered with. That's helping... His father, Go ahead. His father does, like, strenuous activity. Um, and again, I, I didn't intervene in the beginning. But strenuous I don't activity that. like what? Like, he'll have him run a track or he'll have him... Um, do exercises Nah, for me I don't think that's what's going to work What's going to work is he has to go Volunteer at the homeless shelter What's going to work, he got to go clean mm -hmm. out the basement For the elder that lives down the street He got to pick up trash in the neighborhood You got to make him do things that are not cool The exercising is I don't, That's not enough because I just don't see that as being too effective You know, you mm -hmm. got to put him to work Doing things he absolutely Does not want to do well, he volunteers and well, he already volunteers and helps with homeless people already, and helps okay. them, you know, in their homes. And he volunteers at the uh, the center for the elderly. So, which is powerful. So we got to find other things process. then. Right, right. He he does that naturally. Understood. You know? Which is a good thing. So we got to find other things. But if there's no consequences, his behavior is never changing. But I don't know what other consequences to. You got to study you your know. child. You got to study your child. Right. Every child is different. What works for one won't work for the other. All of us have things we don't like. All of us. We got to find them and we have to apply them. Every living organism has things they do not like. Things they mm -hmm. absolutely do not want to do. They have no interest in it whatsoever. That is what must become your son's consequences. Okay, so I'll have to figure out what that is. Yeah. And you already know. You already know what they are. The problem is we often don't want to go to those math. things. He doesn't like math. And he doesn't particularly care for the current relationship with his, his, his dad. Those are the only two things that I know that he doesn't like. He don't get along with his father. No. Uh, there's, 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 I wish I could, uh, you know... I'm going to call you because I think that plays a role in the dynamics between his father and I plays a part in his interest, the interest part, not the academic part, but the interest part. I think the inconsistency between the two of us contributes to the inconsistency with his math. That's what I believe, but I'm not a professional. Okay. Okay. Um, uh... And see, the thing is, too, he's been allowed to go so long without achieving in math that it's almost like a, it's a habit now. Right. You know, we, we let it we let it crystallize into a habit. That's OK. We can undo it. We mm -hmm. can undo it. Um, I, I think he don't like putting forth the effort that's necessary to excel in math. And that's where the consequences have to come into place. He needs motivation. And the consequences and rewards are the motivation. What are the things that he likes to do? What are some things he really wants to do that he, ha that he hasn't been able to do yet? Those become the rewards. Because you got to have consequences and you got to have rewards. He likes art and trains. That's, that's his interest. And he likes to sing and you know play instruments. Well, he has to earn that now. You want to sing and play instruments and you want the trains. You have to earn that. And you, we're going to judge that based on you passing your math quizzes and tests. So that's what we're going to have to do. The things he liked to do can no longer be given to him just because he wants. We now have to get to a place where you only get it when you earn it. He has to earn those things. They're not automatics anymore. There's too much we give our children without them having to earn it. You have to change that culture in the home now. He has to earn okay. those things, and it's going to be judged based on how he achieves in mathematics. Okay. Okay. I got it. I appreciate your help, and I will be reaching out to you in the future for a consultation. No problem. Also, FYI, I know you're not right next to Newark, but I'll be in Newark on Sunday the 15th. Next Sunday, they're having a black book giveaway. 
uh, especially if you know people with young children. They're going to be giving away free books at the Black Bookstore. It's called Source of Knowledge Bookstore, 867 Broad Street in Newark. And that's from 12 until 6 next Sunday, but I speak at 2 on the 15th. Okay, thank you so much. No for the problem, Queen. Be blessed. Bye -bye. Right now. Hello. Uh, good af Good morning. Who am I speaking with, beautiful? Uh, my name is L. Sister L, and you are in what city in Ohio? Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. Thuggish, ruggish bone. Talk to me about your. Uh, <laughs> go ahead with your question, beautiful. So I'm just trying to really get help for my son to find good education. Right now he's in a charter school and he's been there since kindergarten during COVID and stuff. And he has an IEP and he also, uh, he was diagnosed with autism level two, but. What, what, so what grade was he in when he was initially diagnosed with autism? I want to say second grade. Second grade autism. Dude, how, what, how, what grade is he in now? Fourth. He's in the fourth grade. Do you believe your son is autistic? Slightly. But I don't... You do I don't believe he is? You, I, you, you I believe he is, is and he's mild? Or are you not certain? I'm not certain. Him and his, his father... Now, we're not certain. His father doesn't think he is. But I'm. it's, it's something there, but I don't know what it is. You know, I don't want to... I don't know. Okay. Um. Does he have an IEP? Yes. He's in the fourth grade. He has the IEP since second grade, right? Yes. What is his academic placement? Is he in a regular class getting pulled out? Is he in a full-time class? Is it part-time 50-50 split between the autistic support and the regular class? What is his placement? He's in a regular class, and he he gets pulled out for the therapy portion of it, but he's in a regular class. Okay, so he's getting regular academics, basically. Yes. And how is he doing academically? He's he's doing okay. He could be better, but he's doing okay. He's really good at math and um, spelling and reading. So he's good there, but it's just the comprehension is kind of his issue. Okay. So then what is your issue then? Because I'm hearing you saying he's doing okay. So what is he's your issue? He's doing okay, but I, he, he could be doing better. Like his grades to me aren't as good as they, I don't feel like he's being pushed. Are, are, are y'all pushing him? Are y'all uh, yeah, pushing him? Are. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes. So when yes, you say you don't feel like he's being pushed, what do you mean? At school, yes, at school. What do you mean, though? When you say he's not being as pushed far, at school? Like he has issues with his writing, and that's a part of his... They said it's a part of his curriculum. The writing is really my issue. Like the writing and the comprehension is my issue. Okay. He can practice the writing and the comprehension at home. So, again, are we doing enough? Yes, absolutely. At home, we do. He goes to tutoring. He also goes to his therapies twice a week. And so he does. We do. We do. We read every night. We go to the library every weekend. And then we do other activities that will. That's a part of the occupational therapy that we get funding through the state. So, yes, I do a lot of stuff. Okay. Okay. But you feel like in the school. Yes. They're not challenging him enough. Yes. Have you spoken to the teacher about that? Yes. So the last last year and the year before, everything was great as far as that. But now they've switched a lot of things. They've gotten, I guess, younger teachers. And I noticed like a change to in his energy when it's time to go to school. Uh, so I have I written the principal. Then I also the principal said, you know, the teachers are younger. They're new. So they have to get a chance to, to know him and, and certain things. So I have talked to the school. I also did reach out to the school district because he goes to a charter school. So mm -hmm. I was trying to see if I could get more support there through the school district. But they told me that I had to unenroll him in order for them to give me more assistance in order for them to test him as well. Well, I don't know if he need to be tested because you said he's doing mm -hmm. OK, but he just needs to do better. I, I, I mean, do we want to be looking for special ed? Because it don't sound like he needs. No, special I don't. Ed. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that at all. OK, I but you said to, to test them. Test them for what? 
that that's what the school said. I didn't say that. They were saying the test them. I guess for the IEP for the Cleveland Public School, since he goes to a charter school, they said they would have to retest because he didn't do the testing through through them. Okay. Well, you can only be in the charter school or in the public schools. You can't do okay. both. So, you know, um, I mean, but you do have to consider, though, if you don't feel like he's being properly challenged in the charter school, the question is, will the neighborhood school be a better fit? And I don't know because every neighborhood school is different. Every charter school is different. Um, if you don't feel he's being challenged. Um, the other thing, well, that's that's that, that's going to be the most important decision y'all got to make. You okay. know, would he be better served in the neighborhood school? Because some charter schools are horrible, you know, and if he ain't get he got a first year, second year teacher who don't know how to teach. He could end up wasting a whole year. You know what I mean? Right. So that's a decision y'all got to make. The other thing, you know, is to supplement it, which you said you guys are doing. Um, I don't know if it's enough if he's still not where he's supposed to be, though. Um, they say he they say he is, but it's like different things. Like, really, it's just the comprehension. That's why I said I do think some things when you speak to him, he doesn't. It's an emotional thing, I feel. And I actually have a test for him. They, they, I get nervous about this stuff because I'm new to all this stuff. Like, it's really, you know, taking me time to even just soak it in, to be honest with you, like, the diagnosis and everything like that. And I'm trying to figure out what avenue should I take, should I? Like, I don't want to, like you said earlier in the live, overanalyze and say he needs to do this, this, and that. I just want to make sure that he's getting a proper education. And, and I notice even with the school that he's been at, like, they've been, every year so the teachers are getting younger and younger. And it's I can, I can tell that it's... I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what I can do while he's in fourth grade before he hits middle school because the school goes all the way up to eighth grade. And I don't know if I should, like you said, I'm just trying to figure out what would be best for him. That's all. Well, the thing is with comprehension, that's a skill poorly taught in any school. Okay. So if you want your child to be a good comprehender of what they read, you got to do that at home. Okay. You know, like. I had to teach myself how to comprehend in college and I was pretty much a straight A B kid, but I was never taught comprehension. Once kids can read and once they're fluent, that's kind of where school stop the comprehension part because it's so labor intensive. They don't really get into that. They don't have enough time to get into that. You know, some really okay. great teachers will teach kids how to comprehend what they read, but a lot of them don't get to it. You know, they stop with the fluency and the skill. Uh, so you'll probably have to work with him at home with that. Um, but here's okay. where I'm confused at, and you got to help okay. me. On the okay. one hand, I'm hearing you say he's fine. He's just a little bit beneath where he's supposed to be. But then on the other hand, I'm hearing these great concerns. So I'm confused because you're saying he's okay. He's just a little behind. But then on the other hand, it sounds like you're very much concerned. So where... It's a, I think the concern, too, is with like socially and things. And that's where I said even outside of the education because... Basic comprehension, he understands, which is social cues and those things like that. That's why I was saying in the school where he is, I think it's a little over. It, it could be overwhelming at times. He's gotten much better, and I think that comes with maturity, too, by him getting older. But that I think is the issue of the, the social skills and being in school. You know, I'm, that's where it is. Like, I, again, he the grades are okay, but they're low. You know, his his math is a, his math is great and actually the reading is great but everything else is like a little lower let I'm, me ask I'm you a question his iep is only for autism correct yes so when he gets pulled out are they working on academics or are they strictly working on autism communication skills communication skills okay nothing academic correct okay because one thing you could do queen you could call an iep meeting and tell them that because he's autistic, he's often distracted intellectually. He's distracted psychologically in a class, right? Right. And that you want them to start working with him on some of his academics when he gets pulled out that class. Right. You and can I make a case for actually, that. Yeah. You can make a okay. case for that with the IEP team. Okay. And say, y'all need to start focusing on academics because he's missing so much of the instruction because he's wandering in his head. As right. an autistic child does, like I would try that, to let because he has an IEP, I would try to leverage that. Okay. You feel me to get him some more one-on-one -on -one time when he's outside that classroom. Okay. 
but I would not go shopping for another learning disability classification. I would just leverage what he already has. Okay, that was my question to you, like, as a, you know, vaguely giving you my, you know, what's going on with me. I wanted to know, like, do you feel like he's so, you know, because I think I like the school, but I just want to make sure that it's just when things change and principals change every year, a new principal, so it's new teachers, and it's, I just notice it's getting worse and worse. I'm just like, he's still pushing through, but when it comes to the younger teachers, it's less patience, you know, I'm getting phone calls sometimes, but it's not, like I said, he's mature because when he's younger, it's a little worse. But I just don't want to, like you said, I don't want to go shop around and overthink. I got you. I got you. But try that out. Call an IEP meeting and say you need to discuss your son's program and progress. Because remember, the IEP team job is to come up with the program, what they're going to learn in special ed, placement, where they're going to learn it, progress, making sure it's benefiting him. And to me, it sounds like you have a program issue. They're not working on some of the deficit areas. And you got a progress issue. He's not growing academically the way that he should. So that's IEP stuff. Okay. Yeah. I did call a meeting last week with them. We just had a meeting. That was some of the things I expressed. But they were saying that those things that I'm expressing are, are in the new curriculum. So I'm like... That's are in the new uh, regular ed curriculum? That's what he... Yes, that's what the principal was saying in the meeting last week. Well, when, when did school start? School started August 24th. So it's only been a few weeks in. But you're not pleased by what you're seeing. Yes. And he's and in no, what? He's not, in the fourth not, grade. Know, is there? Is there another not, fourth grade this teacher? Last few weeks. This was. I'm sorry. What you say? No. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What did you say? No, it's not even just from this beginning of the school year. This stems from even last year. Like I've been having an issue. Like it was a delay even getting the. You know when he was having issues when we noticed something to get the IEP. It took them a year to do that. So he got a like, different teacher this year from last year. Yes. Yes, he does. The two teachers, he had a black, this was my thing too. He's actually, he had a black male teacher and I noticed the complete difference as well with how he was in the classroom, how socially he was a little bit. And, you know, that teacher left, they, they, they basically fired a lot of the black teachers. And he has a black teacher now, but she's, she's younger. I think she's maybe 22, 23. So it's, it's a difference. They did a whole staff cleanup. So that's why I'm kind of nervous a little bit because you know with an autistic child they don't like a lot of change you know and even the, the staff that was doing the evaluations wait 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 you, oh, 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 wait a sec his IEP no it is for autism yes go ahead go ahead finish what you were saying oh no that was that was basically it that's all I was okay, saying okay okay yeah, I think he need to call. I, I I don't think they're doing enough. And then the other question becomes: Does he need a little bit more time out of the class? I'm not a big fan of that, though. If he can handle the regular class, I think that's where he should be. Um, but I just think you need to leverage that time out of the class and find out exactly what they're doing with him because a lot of that time could be used for the academics. Okay, the other thing too, it just sounds like it might not be a good school too. That's another thing. Right, and that's why I was trying to see if you, because I know you said you had a lot of resources, and I was trying to see if it's, you know, someone you could lead me to that could assist me with finding schools, because I did try to contact CMSD, but nah. they were pretty much vague, and they were yeah. just saying, you know, all our curriculums are the same, and so it's like, yeah, I you got to do your own research on the schools. There's nobody who's going to be able to break down all the schools and tell you, you know, what's good and bad about them. That's the research you have to do um, by looking them up. Look at the state website, see what the grades they got. Look at the district website and try to talk to some parents who have children who go there. That, that That's a legwork you would have to do yourself. I will tell you this. A public school district has more resources than a charter school when it comes to special ed. Okay. I will tell you that. The other thing I will tell you, too, that if that charter school is failing your child, you know, you could take them to due process with the state of Ohio and have them pay for a private school education. That's another way to go. But first, you need to make sure you have documentation that you've constantly complained to them about the education your son is getting. And I think it starts by having another meeting and leveraging the time he spends out the class. Now, I know they told you that the curriculum targets that. I don't care what the curriculum target because the teacher is not doing a good job teaching it. And I want these things addressed while he's out of the class with the special ed teacher for autistic support. You need to make that clear. And you might got to put it in writing because then if they don't do it, 
Because basically you're making an argument that your son is not receiving faith. That's what I'm hearing you say. He's not getting his free and appropriate public education, which is a violation of special ed law. So you need to write a letter and I can look at the letter if you want to send it to me when you're done. But they need to know from you that I don't believe my son is receiving faith. And I don't believe the time he's spending outside of the classroom is really being maximized to his benefit. Okay, that's perfect. I definitely can send you that a draft of it. That'd be great. Because that's really what I feel is going on. Because he's really smart. I just think he's not, like you said, in that time out the classroom. When I did ask him about it, it was like, oh, it was just for the the speech, and then, which he doesn't need speech, and you know, the occupational therapy portion of it. And I'm like, he doesn't need that. He needs that that time to sit down and get other things, you know, outside when he's alone, like you said. So I'm definitely, I have a principal. I just emailed him, so I'm going to draft the email, and I would like to send it to you so you can see what he says. And, you know, help me what I need to add or take out. Okay. Well, keep me posted, Queen. You got the number. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. All right now. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Sister LaCosta? Yes? Uh, yes, ma'am. Shreveport, Louisiana. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay, go right ahead with your question. Okay, my question is, well, first off, my grandson is three years old. He is uh, pretty much nonverbal. But he has an IEP. He started school this year. Um, they said he was developmentally delayed on his IEP. How old is he? He's three. And they said he was developmentally delayed, which is a generic category that we use on young children when we really don't know what the problem is. Continue. Okay. And he also goes to uh, therapy at this pediatric autism center. Um, he hasn't been diagnosed with autism yet, waiting on an appointment, uh, but he is in school. And like I said, he doesn't, he says things like, for instance, he doesn't say, may I have some water or can I have a snack or hey, mommy, or he doesn't say any of those, but he knows 30 sight words. He recognized all his alphabets. He can say them. He know all his shapes, his colors. He just doesn't talk. Okay. Uh, did he ever have tubes put in his ear? No, sir. But he's had like maybe three. They checked his ears, uh, three ear infections, but they didn't find anything. He had three ear infections. Has he ever had an audiological evaluation? Uh, not yet. You need to get one and make sure there's no hearing loss or no hearing issues. Not just a hearing test, an audiological evaluation. It's a much deeper test. Okay. That's number he, one. Uh, and he's in a, um, I, I, I specifically asked for him to be in a, he's in a special ed class uh, with children that are talking because. So uh, he doesn't talk at all? my main problem. He doesn't talk. Does he talk at home? He don't make noises or nothing. He does like gibberish or he whines or cries for what he wants or he'll like see a specific word on the box of cookies or something he wants and he'll say rice for a rice crispy treat, but he don't just talk. And you said he gets speech? Yes, he gets speech uh, two times out of the week. How the long he been class. getting speech? Um, maybe about two months now. So he it just got he started. And English is the only language spoken in the home. Yes, yes. It could be autism. It it sounds a little bit like it, but he's kind of young to be sure. Um, does he play with other children? Well, he's only three, but if you put him around other three-year-olds, will he go play with them? He's kind of, he doesn't like to share. 
he he kind of you know likes to play by himself. Take this sound stuff. like autism. He'll go get in the bed, look at his own TV, you know. But so he did he ever? Does he make strange that. noises? Did he ever make strange noises? Uh, sometimes, and he moves his hands sometimes, and he kind of goes around in circles. But he's so smart. Um, it do sound like autism, but I would get the hearing check. It could be selective mutism as well. But some of the mm -hmm. stuff you're saying, he play alone. So he don't play with other kids. Um, not really. Not really, but he has an older cousin that he loves to be outside. So he'll run and play with him a little bit. Pretty if much you took him into a, if you took him into a playroom with other three-year-olds, will he go play with him? Probably by himself. <laughs> okay, it do kind of sound like autism. I still think it's a little too early for the determination, but it does sound like autism. See, here's the thing we got to consider. Getting the label is one thing. Getting solutions is something else. And I think yeah. too often we think the label is a solution. It's not. So, okay, he gets diagnosed with autism. Now what? Now, they will give him the ABA therapy. You know, he'll get the ABA therapy. That can or cannot help. You know, well, the, he gets uh, he get, when he goes to therapy, he goes to speech. He does uh, OT and PT. Right, OT and PT ain't going to help with autism, though. Um, right. You know, he needs them, but but developmental delay was he premature or anything? No, he wasn't. I just uh, I just noticed he wasn't talking, and his sister is one, and she talks very fluently. <laughs> okay. So this is a case where we just got to keep working with him and monitor him. Um, yeah. But like I say, go ahead. Like mom. I say, he 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 reads books. He will make the sound of the animals. He know every animal. He just doesn't talk. Uh, he's getting speech. He just started getting the speech. Could be autistic. We just got to keep working with him and see what happens because he's only three, you know, okay. this next year from three to four. Uh, we just we just got to watch. OK. Yeah, that's and what I was, I was told. He'll stay in the same class until he ages out. He'll stay in the same class. OK, right. In preschool. Yes. Until it's time to go to kindergarten where he'll be reevaluated again and they will decide whether or not he still needs special ed when he starts regular school in kindergarten. Yeah. Okay. Well, you got my number. Keep me posted. Yes, sir. Thank you so No problem, much Queen. No problem. Be blessed, Mom. All right. Brother Antoine. Yes, how you doing today? I'm well, sir. Uh, how can I help you there, good brother? What's your question? My question is this. Um, I, I'm from uh, upstate New York, right? Mm -hmm. And for a while, like when I was growing up and everything like that, we had rec centers, you know, like the local boys, boys and girls clubs or YMCA's and stuff like that. So what they did was they took away all that stuff, right? And they put like the red triggers and everything like that in the white areas. But when you go to these, when you go to these white areas, or when you go to where they have directions and everything at now, only thing you see is children of color. How do you go? How do like what's step one going about bringing that back so our kids and everything like that can have that? <laughs> To be honest with you, good brother. And where you at? What city you in? Utica, New York. Utica, Utica, Utica. I've never been to Utica. Um, you, um, you, you ever heard of Syracuse? Yeah, I've been to Syracuse several times. I'm, I'm about 30 minutes. Got you. Well, the issue is black America, we have backed ourselves into a corner by constantly pushing multiculturalism, colorblindism, people of color, 
and fighting for everybody instead of just fighting for ourselves. Like, if you notice, we've never had a fight just for ourselves. Ex Civil not. rights mostly was about us, though. But since since Dr. King's assassination, we have been stuck on multiculturalism. Every time we talk, we talk for everybody. We never just focus on our own problems. And the problem is when we're advocating for these other people, we're advocating for people who don't even like us. Right. Latinos don't like us. Arabs don't like us. European Jews don't like us. Chinese don't like us. East Indians don't like us. And we're always fighting for people who don't even like us. And now they've weaponized those same people we've been advocating for. They've weaponized them against us now. And, 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 and it's, it's tough. And even now, even now that people of color have been weaponized against black people, immigrants have been weaponized against black people, we still won't fight for ourselves because we believe it's wrong to be for black people first. We believe that's wrong. We're the only people in the country who have a problem being for themselves. We have to be for everybody. We can't be for ourselves. It's a, it's, it's a psychological straitjacket that this illusion of inclusion has put us in. Black religion has a lot to do with it as well because most black churches preach colorblindism too. So that don't help either. You know, but we, we did this to ourselves, man. We really did this to ourselves. Everything from not holding Barack Obama accountable, worshiping him while he did nothing for us. And of course, you know, that this is our fault. So much of this is our fault. And we still won't organize the black vote. Even now, you got black people out here running around uh, uh, caping for Kamala Harris. Some of them running around caping for Donald Trump. Neither one has made a single pledge. Donald Trump did nothing for us for four years in office. Kamala Harris did nothing for four years in office. And we still fighting for both of them. This is our fault. This is all our fault. So so what are you saying? Like we just... Well, just here, my thing, independence. The, the one thing we have control over is what we do with our money and what we do with our time. We still have control over that. Well, we not, still have not, control not, over that. So the question becomes, what is the black community going to use their disposable income to build for themselves? That's the question. The question is not what we can get politicians to do for us. That's a secondary question. And that's a secondary question for everybody but black people. Black people are the only people whose primary strategy is to beg the politicians to do it for us. Nobody else has that as a primary strategy. Chinese build for themselves. Getting the politicians to do things is second. Arabs built for themselves, trying to get the politicians to do something is separate. Black people are the only people who voting is the most important thing we do. Voting is the most important thing black people do because we have no other strategies. We have no other blueprint. We have no other agenda because we're disorganized and we like being disorganized because we hate each other. So for us, voting is more important for us than everybody else, even though we get nothing out of it and everybody else does, because we have no other solution in play. Nothing. Even if the Chinese don't get what they want from the president, if they don't get what they want from the governor, they already have solutions in place for themselves. They have institutions and systems. Arabs got institutions and systems. Jews have institutions and systems. Latinos got institutions and systems. Black people don't have no institutions or no systems. Our entire strategy is beg the politicians. Vote. That's our whole thing is vote. Okay, so someone like me, right? I don't have the funds per se to, to do something like this. And, and like in the well, it, it's not individual though. It ain't about what you can do. It's about what we're going to do together. Nothing is in, no solution is based on one person. No solution. You feel me? So the question yeah, is, what is the black community of Utica going to do about this? That's what it, not you, not me. What are the people gonna going to do? They're not going to do anything but complain. Well, see, then, then we can't move forward. Then we can't move forward. Because, see, black people have a learned helplessness thing. We also have a psychological hopelessness thing. We don't like to admit it, though. Black people do not like to admit that we are psychologically hopeless. You can tell by our behavior. We don't do Absolutely. anything collectively for ourselves, and we haven't in a long time. We do a bunch of events. That's all we do. Events, events, events. Event for this, event for that, event for this, event for that. Million Man March for one day. No systems, no movements, no institutions. And that's why nobody got to respect us. You got to respect us. Respect them for what? They're not going to do nothing. We'll riot for a day. We'll tear some shit down. We'll take a whole month to tear some shit down, but we won't take a week to build anything up. 
Look at all the riots we had as a result of police genocide. Look at all the riots we have. And I'm not against the riot because that's how you get the power structure's attention to let them know you're tired of their shit. So I'm not against the riot. But where was the revolution? Where was the institutional revolution to build something after we tore everything down? It's easy to tear shit down. I'm not impressed with black people who can loot and burn and break up shit. A toddler can do that. A toddler can do that. But a toddler can't build. When are we going to do something for ourselves with this $2 trillion in spending power we have? That's the one question that is never discussed. Look at all the YouTube videos. Look at all the Instagram posts. Look at all the memes. You rarely hear a serious conversation on what we're going to do for ourselves. That's the one conversation black people don't want to have outside of having fun. We always talking about vacations. We always talking about parties. We always talking about going to buy something, going to party. What are we going to do for ourselves with our money? That is the elephant in the room. And the question is nothing because black people don't have enough collective love. We don't love. It takes love to want to sacrifice. Right. And we have to be guaranteed a victory in order to struggle. That is cowardice. That's like saying, yo, you got to go fight that dude over there. He picking with your little sister. Well, I can't fight him unless I know I'm going to win. What the hell is that? Nobody can predict an outcome. That's like a boxer getting in the ring. When you walk in that ring, you don't know if you can beat him, but you're going to do your best. You have enough courage to try. Black people saying, I don't have no courage to try. Black people saying, I'm not trying shit unless you can guarantee me we're going to succeed. I'm not going to try. And that's yeah, black people. No sure. confidence in self. Zero hope in each other. And so what we do, we try to escape blackness by bunny hopping. We try to escape blackness by marrying, uh, you know, by saying we ain't black. We pretendians. We will do anything instead of solving our problems as black people. We would just rather try not to be black. That's our strategy. I'm just going to do whatever I can to try not to be black. I'm a pass as white or I'm a marry a white person. I'm going to be a pretendian. You know, I'm going to say I'm not from Africa. Whatever I can do to get away from being black because we have no hope. That's how most of us think. Okay. And it, it, it's sad, brother. It's sad. And it ain't getting no better. It ain't getting no better. Like they have done an excellent job convincing us that it's useless, absolutely useless to fight as black people. You better fight as a Muslim, fight as a Christian, fight as a minority. Don't fight as a black person because nobody likes y'all and nobody wants to be with y'all. And most of us, we're, we're psychologically de defeated. And any solution we try to come up with, you got to make sure you don't have people in there who are going to infect your movement with negative criticism and negative thinking, you know, because that's what the YouTube and struggle streamers are all about. They're all about criticizing and condemning anything while they do nothing at all. That's that's what they specialize in. They will make a million videos tearing down what you're trying to do for the people while they themselves do nothing at all. That's what they specialize in. The YouTube and struggle streamer community is a collective self-hatred campaign. That's that's all they do is find people to talk about while they do nothing. So it don't look good, my brother, but I'm going to tell you this, though. It's going to get worse if we don't make it get better, because I'm looking at these three eclipses that are coming up. We got an eclipse on that turn of birthday. Well, the first one, we got an eclipse on the day Harriet Tubman escaped from slavery. September 17th is a, is a lunar eclipse. That's the day Harriet Tubman escaped from slavery. And then Nat Turner eclipse is a partial solar on November 2nd, the day Nat Turner was born. And then we have an almost eclipse where the moon just barely escapes the Earth's shadow. That's on October the 17th. And that's the day Dangerfield Newby, the first black man to die for John Brown in the Harper's Ferry Raid, 1859. That's when he was, he was killed. So I'm looking at your next three eclipses are close together and they are all on significant enslaved ancestral revolutionary dates. And then on November 19th, Pis uh, Pluto goes into Aquarius for the first time in 226 years. And 
Pluto is a revolutionary sign, a revolutionary planet. That's the planet of destroy and rebuild. And then Aquarius is the revolutionary. That's the, that's the revolutionary. So them two coming together means there's going to be a whole bunch of drama and a whole bunch of war, conflict, and revolution over the next 226 years. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius, you had the American Revolutionary War against Great Britain. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius, you had the Haitian Revolution. So when I say revolution is coming, revolution is coming. The question is, are black people going to use this time, this galactic, this, 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 you know, uh, 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 profound, universal, cosmological time? Are we going to use this to try to get ourselves out? I don't think it's a coincidence that Pluto goes into Aquarius less than two weeks after the election. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. Once this election is over, all hell is going to hit the fan. All hell is going to hit the fan. For, and I'm talking from a universal perspective, from a spiritual level. It's time for the world to be recalibrated. There's going to be a universal recalibration of power. The question is, are black people going to sit on our asses? There's going to be a new global power. America is on her way out. America will not survive Pluto in Aquarius. I, I can tell you that right now. 225 years from now, when Pluto moves into her next sign, America will no longer be the superpower of this planet. The question is, will it be African people or will it be the Chinese or the East Indians or something else? But we're living in some revolutionary times right now, my brother. Revolutionary time, unprecedented revolutionary times from a, a cosmological standpoint. But are black people going to take advantage of it? That's, that's, that's a good question, <laughs> That's, that's a good question. I mean, think about that now. Last time Pluto was in Aquarius, you had the greatest black revolution and the greatest white revolution. You had the American revolution and the Haitian revolution the last time Pluto was in Aquarius. I mean, I, I feel that I feel that needs to be something because I just don't I just don't understand because like the reason why the reason based behind my question is this. OK, you have like a lot of people, they 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 believe in, you know, uplifting the kids and everything like that. Me personally, I don't believe that you going along with that platform. I don't believe you do that as far as elementary schools. I feel like you, you, you should reach the kids as far as when they get to them adolescent stages when you're in junior high because that's when they start making certain decisions. Well, we should have their mind before that, though. Because right. if you have their mind before that, you don't have to worry about them making the bad decisions. You don't You don't think that as a, as, a, as someone who's like in them elementary ages, you know, a lot of them will forget. Like, okay, say say I come, I, I'm, I'm like a book buddy. I come through and I, I'm assigned this one kid, you know. A bunch of us, we sign certain kids, you know, we're helping them read, write, stuff like that in the school. I believe that, you know, by the time they get to them stages where they're influenced by things as far as entertainment and music and everything like that, they, they'll probably forget some of the things that I, that I talked about. The well, the thing day. is, we're not disagreeing. I'm just saying you start them as soon as they're born. What okay. you're saying is you intensify it during that adolescent period because that's when we can lose them. Right. So, no, I agree with you on that. I'm just saying we start as soon as they're born. But I agree with you. We need to intensify around that because the way that America has set this whole uh, psychological indoctrination system up, is they hitting our kids with the rainbow agenda as soon as they get into kindergarten. They hitting them hard. They hitting them hard because they want to make sure when your child is old enough to procreate, when your child is old enough to procreate, we're going to make sure they don't want to. Right. You see what I'm saying? We're going to make sure that he ain't even think about no girls when he turned 12. She not even think about no boys when she turned 12 because we didn't already turned them out. Right. That you see, you, you see what I'm saying? And, and we're going to make sure that they don't become no type of black activists because we're not even going to tell them what we did to their ancestors. They're not going to learn about no slavery, no racism. They're not getting no Jim Crow, no separate but equal. They're not getting none of that. So they're going to make sure that they are politically docile and sexually confused before they graduate. 
Absolutely. And the saddest thing about all of this is not what the school system is doing. The saddest thing about all this, we're not going to do anything for ourselves. That's the sad. As bad as the schools are, once we finish talking about the school system, we got to look in the mirror and say, why we don't have our own. True. You feel me? At the end of the day, black people have enough money to radically transform our reality if we wanted to. $30 $30 billion on fake hair, perms, and weave, and you got black girls out here selling a body just to pay rent? And black women are spending that kind of money on fake hair that's killing them with fibroid tumors and skull cancer? Yeah. It's hard to care about a people who don't care about themselves. It is hard to care about a people who don't care about themselves. And these other groups, they don't care about us anyway. They, like, they don't care about us anyway. And then on top of that, we just give the world excuses after excuses to not even want to be bothered with us. I mean, half our problems are solvable by ourselves. But we're not solving them because we want the white man to solve them because we want to spend our money on having fun. Black people are overgrown children. We behave like 30, 40, 50, and 60 year old toddlers. That's how we behave. We all about fun and fashion, pleasure and enjoyment. That's our whole life. Look at the rappers. Look at them. Overgrown children. Chains, cars, parties, liquor, weed. And you come from a ghetto without a single black institution in it. Without a single black institution in it. But you got a $100,000 chain on. But you got a $100,000 chain on. You're right. Somebody just had on a $5 million watch. And you come from a ghetto that ain't got a single school in it or nothing. What that tells you, because I don't want to demonize the celebrities because they're no different than us. Take all the celebrities, put them back in poverty and switch them out with black people in poverty. And guess what? You will have the same thing because every black person in America is willing to sell out the community to do better for themselves. Period. Period. That's why I don't go too far into demonizing the celebrities. Switch out LeBron, switch out Oprah, switch out Jay-Z, switch out Puff, switch out Bob Johnson, switch out Serena, switch out Rihanna, switch out all the black billionaires, Kanye, switch them out. And guess what? Switch them out right now and you will have the same thing because most black people have no problem selling out their people to get rich. Most of us will do it in a heartbeat. And that's why celebrities do not respond to criticism because most of them are intelligent enough to know that if you were offered what I was offered, you would have did it too. Well, LeBron built a school. No, he did not. That is a public school. LeBron James did not build a school. That is a lie. The LeBron James school is a public school. It is paid for by the taxpayers of the state of Ohio. He does not have a school. He does provide incentives. He pays for them to go to college and their parents. He does a lot of good incentives. So I don't have an issue with his incentive. It is not his school. He does not own it. He did not build it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought he actually built it. No celebrity, to my knowledge, has an independent school for black children. No celebrity. Not a basketball player. Not a football player. Not an actor. Not a rapper. Not a dancer. Not a singer. I don't know of a single celebrity with an independent school for black children. I don't know one. Okay. A lot of charter schools. Nothing independent for their own children. Right. Okay. You taught me something. I didn't know that. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. I appreciate your time, brother. No problem, to... King. No problem. Be All safe. Right. All right. Be All cute. right now. And nobody better ever call LeBron James an activist again after he sided with Israel against the Palestinian people. You better never tell me LeBron James is an activist. Get the hell out of my face with that. I love the brother. Good father. Good role model. He is not no activist. There's no way in hell you are activist and you sided with a nation that's conducting those types of crimes against another people. He is not an activist. Okay. I'm going to tap in with a few people, then I got to go. We got 10 minutes of tapping in. Who wants to tap in? We got 10 minute tap in session. Who wants to tap in? Who wants to tap in? Tap in with King Kong. Newark, New Jersey, Source of Knowledge, Sunday, September the 15th. 
New Jersey. I want to see all my New Jersey Africans at the Source of Knowledge next Sunday, the 15th. I want to see all my Florida Africans in Jacksonville on Thursday, September the 26th for Edward Waters College. Who tapping in? Going once, Zanafia going twice, Zanafia decline. Who tapping in? Faye going once, Faye going twice. How you doing, Sister Faye? Hello there. How are you? I'm all right. Where's that accent from, beautiful? I'm in the UK, but I'm from uh, the Caribbean. Saint Which Vincent. island? Caribbean is a big place. Which island? St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Okay, I've never been to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I was in the UK about three weeks ago. Did you get a chance to come to my No, I really tried. It was like, like in five minutes, it was all sold yes, out. I will be back, back there uh, October 21st through the 27th. If you message me, I will be sure to send you the flyer uh, once it's available. And we'll probably be doing a couple of events. So there'll be something in London, probably Birmingham, probably uh, Wolverhampton, Manchester. We're going to try to move around a little bit. But um, I'm definitely coming back. So I don't want you to miss that. How, how's it going over there for African people in the, uh, in the well, UK? Well, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite, I, I'm sure as you've seen, you know, the recent race riots, but I mean, that's just a manifestation of kind of what has been bubbling over over time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they kind of, it was an opportunity for them to really kind of show their, through, their um, true colors. Because I think here, the, the, there's a big difference, isn't it, about the racism here is lots of uh, overt and institutional right. racism. More psychological. Yes, yeah, yeah, which is no less oppressive, but it's nowhere we can it's compare it to what you're seeing Not as in the, uh, unapologetic as it is. Yeah, here. absolutely. Absolutely. And um, it's been really um, interesting hearing your insights, particularly in relation to education, because I'm in that space as well. And, uh, um, you know, some of this, many of the same things in terms of how black, black children are treated um, in schooling, you know, the way um, kids are held back, the subtle ways, underlying ways that they are um, held, held back is, 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 is terrible to see. And it's so difficult as a black teacher to, um, you know, work on your own to kind of subvert that system. So my partner's just coming here. So, yeah. Um, hey, how you doing? Peace <laughs> and love, black man. Peace and love. <laughs> Is that Hulk? Yes, sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, sir. My brother. What up, King? Mr. Uma. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm well, brother. What uh, about you? Uh, you know what? I'm always good. It's the others, Dr. Umar. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, good sir. to see you, man. Yes, good sir. Good to see you, man. Likewise, man. You. Not that long ago. I don't know if you remember on Insta, we had a little uh, brief. Oh, uh, okay. I think so. I think so now. Yes, uh, sir. Cool, man. <laughs> Are you in London? or No, you... sir. Uh, America. I'm in the States. Okay. But I'll be Love back next month. Okay. I'll be back next month. God okay. willing. Okay. Love your work, man. We Thank you, brother. Work. Thank very, you. Very important, very important work that you're doing, man. We love Appreciate you. that. For real, man. Appreciate that, King. Stay safe, man. Yeah. Stay blessed, my brother. One love, beloved. Nice. One love. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. I mean, we we really admire, and, and again, lots of the arguments that you make, we're able to distill them and apply them. You know, obviously not in different contexts, but they are. It's really great how you tease out kind of what's working under the service so yes right and particularly about our mindset as well you know yes. your message of the fact that we are we aren't unified even when we are working in the same workplace mm -hmm. um we don't really support each other which is a shame yes yeah. that's that's true sister and we got to change that or we're going to lose mm -hmm. they, you know they're trying to turn us into a permanent underclass globally yes globally mm -hmm. they want to make african people a race of irrelevant souls mm -hmm. and they're and they're and, and they're doing a good job so far mm -hmm. they're doing a good job and it's everywhere everywhere i go 
we're under attack. Uh, whether it's the land, whether it's the food, whether it's the police, whether it's the unemployment, whether it's the school system, whether it's the media, there's no place on earth where we are safe, not even in Africa. Um, so we had better get organized or we will die. Organize or die. Mm. There it is. You know, that's, um, it's funny, I was having a conversation with a Ghanaian brother at work today. And, you know, whenever we speak about black related issues, he always wants to focus on the problem. And I'm trying, uh, to, I'm trying to say to him, we know what the problems are. It's time we start talking about the solution. Yes. And he couldn't get it. He couldn't get past this moment. So when you just said that, it resonated with 